Hey everybody, welcome to the Daily Space Weather. I'm your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash a -Mash. We're looking at the sun here uh, to see a bunch of coronal holes in the northern hemisphere. No sunspots. Small active region rising in the northeast. And lots more interesting stuff as uh, there's a bunch of plasma sort of rotated our way. That and lots more. We won't have a daily Smash Lights segment today. We'll also be talking about cosmic rays and uh, exclusive content, conducive nonsense, hurricanes. So yeah, let's get into some more data here. Here's uh, helioviewer.org. And you see the fields associated with this former sunspot down here. It never got named. It did have umbra for less than 12 hours. Here is the 304 angstroms view. Let's make sure that's the latest. There you go. And there's 171 angstroms. We made some custom movies here. This is uh, 94 angstroms, that active region rising in the northeast. Let that play through a second time for you. Incidentally, today's daily space weather will be a little bit shortened. Here's 171 angstroms in the same region. And we do see some filaments here that are about, oh, I don't know, eight Earths in diameter in terms of their length. And you do see some great examples here of what folks are calling magnetic flux ropes, where we've got streams of electrons and UV emissions from all of that in this case, ionized iron is what the 171 angstrom's wavelength is. And we'll let that play through a second time here. There you go. Actually, more like a fifth time. 10.7 centimeter radio flux is at 71. Having dropped down to 70 a couple of days ago, there is the latest... That's actually cycle 24 there, and by the way, welcome to cycle 25. The KP index, a global measurement of geomagnetism, is currently at zero. So we don't expect to see a lot of action on the magnetometers and so on. Ghost X-ray flux also flatlines, so very low levels of solar activity. No protons striking the magnetosphere right now to speak of, besides a normal very low amount. There's the graph. And let's see the state of affairs in the real-time solar wind. We see a shifty phi angle, and we're expecting to see this to return to a state more like this coming up soon, as uh, we've got those significant series of coronal holes up in the northeast, just in front of that active region, which may or may not be a sunspot. We'll have to leave you in suspense. So the BTBZ has been simmering down here over the past 16 hours. Fiangle returning to a more 180-degree oriented sort of situation. Solar wind density has dropped down to 4.67 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed 387 kilometers per second. Quite steady, actually, in both of those categories over the past 24 hours. Here's the magnetosphere. And this is four hours of data. We're not expecting to see a whole lot going on there. And before we check ground magnetic perturbations, allow me to take a moment to vanish and check the stream strength. Stream is looking good. Here are the ground magnetic perturbations. Getting a little closer to home here than the last slide, which is looking at the Earth from quite a few Earth diameters out. And we don't see a lot of induction or any sort of extreme magnetism here. I believe we've been in one current sheet the whole time over the past 24 hours. And we'll show you that momentarily. First, the GOES magnetometer data, and you can see it's in a fairly tight range here, actually. Lower highs and higher lows. Kind of like Earth's climate in a high cosmic ray environment. 
what say you. So here's the current sheet, and this is the top view ecliptic plane field plot. We're looking at the polarities of the current sheet here, and it's entirely North Pole oriented. So that's actually kind of surprising, uh, an indication that it's pretty strong at the North Pole right now. We won't get into uh, specific solar polar field strength in this video. It's the daily space weather. Here's the line of sight field plot, which shows you also the B field here in blue. As the B field would be overlapped in the other view by the poloidal fields. Looking at it from this view, you can see the B field has got a little bit of a, a bump in it there on the far side of the sun. This data is pretty new here. It's only one hour and 34 minutes old when we made the video. If you're ever wondering what's going on on the surface, just look up the synoptic map. This is the Space Weather Prediction Center at NOAA.gov. The synoptic map. And they've actually recently updated this. It's no longer just totally handwritten. It looks a little nicer. I like it. And let's talk cosmology for a quick moment, as today's daily space weather will have no smash light segment. Let's talk about cosmic ray flux. We've brought up a graph here of the Mexico Cosmic Ray Observatory to cite the fact that cosmic ray flux was higher in around 2010 than it has been at the last solar minimum. As you can clearly see from the graph, this is pressure corrected data and this is for all you folks claiming that we are at a cosmic ray maximum. The maximum ever measured, the maximum maximum. OMG, OMG, cosmic ray maximum. It's not the cosmic ray maximum. There we go. Now let's bring up Olu because Olu shows it right on the main page. And there's the Olu pressure corrected data. And once again, it's, zoom in on that, as it's ultra obvious that cosmic ray flux was higher here than it was here. I mean, it's, this isn't like cherry picked data, folks. This is just regular data. Over the past 30 days, it's quite flat, actually. Now, Moscow's got different... Oh, Moscow's got their neutron monitor back. Yes. So there you go. There's... Up, oh, geez. We're looking at December. <laughs> All right. Ignore that. Here's Mexico City's current data, and you can see it's slightly downticked over the past 30 days. Here's Athens, Greece. as I reappear. All right, I'm back. Here's Athens, Greece. And this is a slight uptick, as this is, this is quite an odd scenario here. I'm not sure if that's some sort of measuring error that does not look legit from where I stand. But if that is legit, that would be a slight uptick over the past 30 days. Removing that, it's totally flat over the past 30 days. And last, a padity and Barentsburg, which are usually at the top of our list. Here's the actual data. Without sensationalizing, fear-mongering, or talking other nonsense about why we should be funded instead of you, because you should be very, very scared, and we're going to tell you why you should be so, so scared and spooked. Here is a 30-day average from Apatity, which is a slight uptick. And here is Barentsburg, which is also a slight uptick. Now this, I think you need permission to access the old data here, otherwise I would look at it for you. Don't take our word for it. Monitor them yourself at the Network of Cosmic Ray Station site. Yes, it's a Russian site. Will it make you into a bot? I don't know. I don't care. If you're scared, don't go to the site. Or get the links directly. Let's look at one of the only known point sources for cosmic ray flux. It is in a complete state of quiescence. See that zero line there? Here's a zero line. There's the historic graph of Cygnus X3, massive X-ray binary known as Deneb, the brightest intrinsic object in the galaxy visible from Earth. 
just happens to be the only known point source for cosmic ray flux. Discovered back in the 70s, when we put up a, a nuke detector, this thing set off the detector with its 4.8 hour periodicity when they realized that protons were making it through a thousand feet of granite. It's Cygnus X3. You can monitor its x-rays at the Neil Gorel Swift Bat X-ray Observatory if you like. And you can read all about it at smashamash.com slash forum in the Cosmology Forum. Do you follow us on Facebook? If so, you may see quotes like this. Stars and planetary cores are composed of condensed, or if you prefer the term, super ionized matter. It's not liquid iron. It's not plasma. It's not hot molten magma. It's condensed matter, which explains basically all of cosmology and refutes idiotic ideas about things such as the ages of stars, planets, and galaxies, as well as the generation of geomagnetic, polar, solar, stellar, and galactic magnetic fields. Yeah, it explains all that stuff. Condensed matter, or if you prefer the term, super ionized. Let's talk about the blast wave at Cygnus. There's a Cygnus supernoval remnant, if you want to call it that. And here's some great imagery from Hubble. You can see those blue areas. I believe that's probably X-ray. Great image of the Cygnus supernova remnant. And what people are going to say is, oh, look, it's a spiral. It must be a Birkeland current. Don't even get me started. If it was electric, there'd be a flow of electrons, and you probably would see nothing there. The fact that this is a fairly stable structure is just makes it cute that people seem to think that it's electric. So in any case, a huge fan of the Cygnus Veil. Go check it out. There's an article about it on SciTech Daily. And again, we are streaming live to Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash smashamash. Thanks to all of our viewers and uh, rebroadcasters and so on over there. We love the platform. And uh, one of these days... I'll get a good enough PC and connection to be able to enter back into the gaming world as I'm I'm trasho 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 gash right now gasho trash uh, right now in terms of gaming by the way if you enjoy the content please take a moment to press like and subscribe as the video cannot continue until you press like and subscribe so I'll just sit back and wait and I'll just sterilize myself. Oh, it's so good. Now I'll sterilize you. Oh, yes. Just come up to the screen, get your sterilization while all these nabs press like and subscribe. It's taking all day once again. Jeez. Back to sterilizing me. Remember, don't look directly into the light if you buy one of these UV wands, folks. It's bad for you to look into a black light. Did you know? I hope so. Now I'm going to have to vanish again. All right, I'm back. And oh my God, a fire has lit. Boy, that blue fire just went right out, didn't it? All right, thanks for pressing like and subscribe on YouTube. Press the notification bell. Maybe you'll actually see when we put up videos like Smash Lights, which, by the way, is not appearing today. Thanks to our new subs over at BitChute. Bitshoot.com slash smash on mash. Today's smash light is an exclusive over there. Here's a clip as it's now ready to go. Is fantastic. And we think it's great. Now we've had to get those guys off the screen. And if you would please excuse me, I would tell you to go subscribe over there. Bitshoot.com slash smash on mash. Also, if you've got a news tip or something like that, feel free to hit me up at the smash VOIP line. Why? Because I don't want you to have my cell phone number. But my VOIP line number, which I typically always have access to, I'm not always checking it, but I typically always have access to the VOIP line. VOIP line is a voice over internet protocol line, folks. It's, it allows you to have internet, have phone access and texting when you don't have access to a cell tower, like if you're in an underground bunker, like <laughs> Smasho Bunker, <clears throat> and stuff like that. Just kidding, folks. Just kidding, folks. But seriously, you can text me or you can call at the Smash VOIP line. It's country code plus one, area code 610-936-9799. We're also on Twitter, and we've been interacting more and more over there, putting up things about morons and morons over there. 
such as certain folks that are at, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, uh, it's, I better, it's, uh, uh huh, mm hmm. Smashamash.com slash forum. If you want to hear about our mission, well, it's there at smashamash.com slash forum slash mission. You want to know what we're suggesting you purchase? Well, head to smashamash.com slash affiliate. There are links to bike lights and supplements, including vitamin D and socks with sharks on them, if you're one of these Jaws fans. There's even links to the keyboard that I use when I'm viewing these Daily Space Weather Live premieres with our audience. Yes. Keyboards like this one here. It's the Arctec because I hate the on-screen keyboards, and while this is very small and very flimsy, it works a thousand, any hardware keyboard, folks, works a thousand times better than any sort of screen-based keyboard. Have you found yourself like, what is wrong with you, phone? Ah, I've pressed the button 14,000 times. Well, I certainly have, and that's part of the reason why I bought a, hard, a hardware keyboard, yeah? Hardware keyboard. Talk about other hardware. We've got various hardware that we built with software and artistic skill, talent, and training. Check out the Smash stores. They're all linked at smashamash.org. For all of you folks who claim you're going to buy a 3C405 shirt, well, where's your 3C405 shirt? Send us an image of you wearing it. Otherwise, it never happened. Perhaps get it in hot pink. It's actually not hot pink. That's more like pencil eraser pink. We've got some orders on the way. Let's get back to space. There's a one-year relativistic electron flux graph, and we've got very low levels of electron flux. As you can see over the past three days, never reaching anywhere near warning territory. All right, let me just make sure that I'm ranting at something that's actually turned on. Yeah, we've got good to go. Here's the relativistic electron forecast model. And here's a visualization for those of you non-number graph people. <laughs> and we see pretty normal electron flux here. This will show you GPS errors. It's showing you the whole layer column all the way up to the thermosphere. Here is just the ionosphere layer, where the plasma sphere meets the Van Allen belt, I guess you could say, is a good, is a good way to say it. And it's looking quite normal also. normal anomalies around the South Atlantic. Here's where stuff is in the solar system. And uh, we've got a Dorito-shaped triangle here. It's probably because Frito-Lay is controlling the solar system. Um, as we all know, shapes are very, very scary in space. So we've got a triangle there. We've got a triangle here. Another Dorito-shaped triangle. An indication that Frito-Lay is probably trying to take over the U.S. election. And here's yet another Dorito-shaped triangle. See this one? Oh my god. That means that Frito-Lay is trying to take over the galaxy. Here's where things will be in a week if Frito-Lay doesn't have anything to say about it. Approaching another full moon, right as we move into the ninth month of September. Here's where things are located. We're streaming quite late today. It's 6.05 a.m. Do you know where your stars are? I like to use in-the-sky.org. Don't forget to breathe through your nose, folks. Yes, it's got to do with nitric oxide levels. Don't believe me. Look it up. If you're up before dawn, you may see the third brightest object in the sky at negative 4.2 magnitude, the delightful star planet, the wandering star, Venus. We don't see any 6-plus magnitude quakes over the past 24, but some deep ones have happened. Here is a 4.9 at Vanuatu. It's nearly 140 kilometers depth. And we see one in the oceanic rift zone north east of New Zealand as well. Here's one near the Kuril Islands in between Kamchatka and Japan. <coughs> oh my god, I've coughed. Holy crap, do you find yourself too? Oh jeez, I've disappeared, but I've reappeared. That's what it's all about, folks. Fall down as many times as you like, just keep getting back up. Here's a 5.5 at Papua New Guinea. I think that might be the largest of the past 24. 
We also see one in the African Rift Zone. I might talk about it. I might not. Depends. Here's a 4.3 at the Philippines. It's at 466.8 kilometers. And thanks for the person who asked the question about how earthquakes are calculated in terms of depth. It's by the triangulation of seismographs. You know, because the Earth's shaped like a sphere. Check this one out. It's a very high earthquake at 1,100 meters above sea level. Check it out. It's in these. Uh, it's in the Sierra San Pedro Mountains, just north of them, actually. So we see we have actually been seeing a volcanic uptick too here. So that's a more interesting. Uh, Possible magmatic activity. A 3.5 is a significant earthquake there. At 1,100 meters, over 3,000 feet above sea level, folks. Here's, uh, let's see, what else do we got? Kermadec 5.4, that's that area northeast of New Zealand. And if you're viewing from under, leave us a comment. Eddie Dawkins, do you watch the videos? Good luck with your running as you transition from world-class cyclist into sprinter. Nishinoshima is erupting. We're here at VolcanoDiscovery.com. Nishinoshima is exploding, in fact. Flight level 080, 8,000 feet there for the ash plume. 3,000-foot plume at Suanusejima seems to have chilled out a little bit there. Cinnabung exploding, flight level 110. Takono exploding, flight level 080. Pobokatapetl exploding, 22,000-foot plume there. Sangay, Revenador, and Sabankaya all exploding. Producing 22,000, 13,000, and 22,000 foot ash plumes, respectively, down there in Ecuador and Peru. Please don't pole vault the calderas or tightrope them, as it's already been done, and you're not going to out tightrope that guy. He's pretty good. We still see power outages in California. They're now under 20,000, thank goodness. Hopefully, they get the wildfires under control. USweather.gov map is looking pretty jacked up. And am I looking jacked up? I've been have I touched my face enough times for it today, folks? Jeez oh whiz the weather. Oh my god. Oh my god. So we see the Gulf Coast. Uh, and some of central Florida actually has some uh, what is that? Heat advise is that heat advisories? Jeez, it's gonna be hot and humid. Really humid. It's going to be dewy sweet. Anyway, here's the GFS forecast. Here's how much rain we're actually expecting by Thursday. Doesn't look that catastrophic to me. Actually, quite a bit there in south-central Louisiana. Ouch. You're talking about 14 inches of rain there? Yowzers. Anyway, this GFS forecast brought to you courtesy Tropical Tidbits. Jeez. Nolens. It's going to be a bad time. Please be prepared if you're in that region. Leave us a comment if you're from there. Let's talk about mitigating COVID and climate change at the same time. Now, this innovative cooling strategy is fantastic. It's using radiative cooling. I won't talk about it anymore because we don't want the video to be too long. Check out the article on SciTech Daily. As far as using the cooling technology to mitigate COVID-19, yeah, it makes the air drier which you're going to see articles all around where humidity kills COVID. Humidity helps COVID be alive. You, you know, it, there's more transmission in dry air. It's on dust particles. It's not on surfaces. It is just uh, cut me a break. But as far as the cooling technology, it is very interesting. And uh, it's going to be part of the wave of the future as technology increases to the point where none of these catastrophes matter in any way. Let's talk about another one that doesn't matter in any way. Sea level rise. The amount of it since 1900 is negligible, although it has happened. It's much, much lower than it was at times like the Minoan Warm period. So this idea that NASA has, what is the title? NASA Research reveals, I won't show it on the screen, NASA Research reveals the true causes of sea level rise since 1900. And then it shows you a scary, scary, spooky photo of Greenland ice sheet melt right on the edge of Greenland where there's not five meters of snow all summer long every summer like last year as we showed you nearly every day. Here's this tiny bit of sea level rise which amounts to, they don't even put a scale here. Nice. So here, 
I'll show you. There you go. There's your great graph with no scale on it. That's that's some science for you. It show it's an infographic showing spooky blue water. Factors driving our rising seas. Now people think it's carbon dioxide, and that's the problem. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, you've got you've got two lines here. One of them starts in the satellite era, as you've got satellite data not lining up with tidal gauge data. Yet another reason why this is utterly irrelevant. Yeah, NASA research does not reveal the true causes of ice level rise, but struggles to explain them is what the title should actually be, since none of these forecasts, predictions, expansion of ocean water, or any of the other stuff make any sense, especially when correlated with their their villain, the carbon dioxide, which, by the way, they can't even trace the actual contributions of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. It's impossible to trace because of things like the exhalation of all plants. For instance, I heard Joe Rogan amazed at the fact that plants breathe and perform cellular respiration after they perform photosynthesis. He thought they were just carbon dioxide sponges that don't use oxygen to breathe and perform cellular respiration like you do. How pathetic is that? And everybody's talking about rogue planets. It's not particularly surprising that you'd have more or less, more small mass objects floating around all over the place everywhere. I mean, we've seen stars that behave like neutron stars traveling at speeds in proportion to the solar wind speed. So I don't know why this is a surprise or news or a headline on anybody's like space or space weather videos or, or space, the final frontier. I don't know what I'm talking about videos and so on. And here's a giant image of that satellite data, making it look very scary, and then not even showing you units here on this side of the graph. What a joke. It's like two millimeters or something like that. It's probably within the margin of error. And let's look at pressure cells here on windy.com, who, by the way, has, has a wonderful mobile app. And our stream is doing well. We're about 27 minutes in, folks. And we'll probably have about three more minutes here. So here's the GFS... Oh, it's, a, it's the Euro. We're going to do the Euro pressure forecast. Actually, let's go to the GFS one. Here's a GFS forecast on windy.com showing the movement of pressure cells, and you can indeed see those two hurricane, tropical system, tropical storm, black holes, neutron stars, doomsday machines, or whatever you want to call them today. There's where things will be at 1 p.m. tomorrow, according to the GFS forecast. And I don't know the names of these things, but I do know the name of the Don Lemon anticyclone. So the Don Lemon anticyclone has evaporated just like Don Lemon's credibility. Let's look at the jet streams of the Western world. There you go. How about the jet streams of the Eastern world? Well, there are those. That's that's flight level 20,000, by the way. All right, we are good. Oh, we've got comments. Let me break out the comments here. Good morning from Oklahoma. Thanks for leaving us a comment, Tin Man 1057 Go follow Tin Man 1057 on twitch.tv. And we see some lightning here, both in Southern Europe and in the U.S. And when we see terrestrial lightning in the U.S., we give somebody a shout out. Hey, Amarillo, there may be stuff moving in your direction. Tuck them carry. There's thunder rolling in. Clovis. We like to use lightningmaps.org to convince people that we're Thor by forecasting thunder. Here are the water vapor maps for Europe and Africa, water vapor maps for the Far East and Oceania. We're clicking the link so you don't have to. I've got 77 tabs open so you don't have to. All right, that's a slight exaggeration. It's to make my point. Water vapor maps for the far uh, for the Americas has been interrupted by a spaceship flying over the planet. Warning, warning, there is a spaceship having flown over the planet. Let's zoom in. Better call Mr. MBB333 and Gina Marie. Check it out. See that big white thing? That's clearly a Borg cube. 
I don't mean the regular ones you see in the show. I'm talking about ones that are like the size of the Earth. So if you're at the North Pole, get out there and look up, and you'll probably see the Borg cube above your head uh, blocking out the sun, depending on your location. Borg cube alert. Only, only available here at youtube.com slash smash a mash and twitch.tv slash smash a mash indeed. We got some concentrated storms here over central Minnesota, making their way out of South Dakota. South Dakota. And a big landfall happening here in the Florida Panhandle, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. Here's a cloud situation there. And since we, since it's still dark there, for the most part, what the heck? There we go. We'll use the shortwave NASA interactive weather satellite there. You can see the cloud cover. More importantly, let's look at the water vapor map to give folks some idea of the close movements of this. I use this when I have big storms over me. The resolution is two kilometers, by the way. So there's a great view of that. And let me check the... Oh, jeez. <laughs> there's a great view of that. By the way, thanks to our subscribe stars and to our patrons, the true source of funding for the content, please consider becoming a, a donor of some kind by visiting the links below the videos. We need lots more cash coming in this year to accomplish our goals, and I guess we may have to do a fundraiser in, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe October, since we have so much scary and spooky content. Thanks to the Smash team for leaving contents, contents, comments, etc., sharing on your social media, and all of that sort of stuff. <sighs> Thanks to Smash Staff for building the website, putting the links that we need, updating the social media, etc. We do have exclusive content on all of those sites. Thanks for flying American Smashways. Please keep your head and arms inside the Smash plane at all times. We've got bonus features as we do most days. We're going to do the 131 Angstrom's 48-hour SDO video, the intensity gram, and the colorized magnetogram. Do we see anything coming out of this active region rising yet? And indeed, we do see some fields there. So that's a pretty recent update. Coronal holes right in front of that. Here's the intensity gram. You won't be able to see any umbrae there. Not yet. You can tell by the fields. And last but not least, the 131 Angstrom's 48-hour view. Thanks for tuning in. Remember, stare at the sun. Don't drink it. And if you do, don't drive. Seriously, don't drive. I might see you out there, and I'd prefer to have less traffic on the roads. Just kidding, folks. Don't forget to follow the hashtag ProDrivingTips on Instagram. Welcome to the neo-renaissance, and since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back, and that covidiously absent from your multiverse?